Hey, what's going on, everybody, and welcome back to the Believe Fantasy Football Show. I am your friendly neighborhood fantasy football analyst, Fabs, and of course, alongside the legendary king, the man, the myth, the legend, the new member of fantasyguys.com. Football guys, what's the matter with you? You can't even do it right. I have because I gotta mess with you, man. I know what it is. It's the diva factor bro. high with this one. It's fantasy bro, uh, f- uh, football um ah! uh, gals. Yeah. What is it? Football guys. Footballguys.com. Yes, Bob Harris. Uh congratulations, pal. Thank you. Uh tell the folks where they're gonna be able to find mm. all of your wonderful content now. At football guys and on Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio, the football diehards program will continue on. Um, but uh, you know, due to health circumstances, uh, with my colleague and friend Emil Cadlick, uh, the football diehard site is going to have to suspend operations. So, uh, you can find out more about that on my uh, X slash Twitter feed pinned to the top of my profile at football diehard. Uh, but the future will be at football guys, and uh, we'll be coming up with all kinds of fun content a lot of video, a lot of written, uh, the usual kind of uh. Fun, but it's a great, great company, great organization, and I've been friends with the uh, the owner there, Joe Bryant. We kind of came up together through this business as well. So it's a, it's a, you know, horrible circumstances, great landing spot. Yeah. So prayers up for Emil. Uh, yep. If you guys don't know who Emil Kalik is, uh, a real innovator and pioneer in the fantasy football space, uh, dating back many, many years. Even well, maybe not before Bob, you know, because he's a been bit. There forever. But uh, <laughs> uh, it's been. Um, he started uh, the high stakes fantasy football. Yes. He started the first high stakes contest. The inventor or the first one who came up with a documented best ball uh, contest back in 1998. Uh, and a real, you know, he and I co founded the uh, Fantasy Sports Writing Association. So, uh, you know, just he's done tons for this organization and, and raised the profiles of many, many, many content creators uh, through his many publications. We had over a million copies on newsstands. Uh, uh-huh. at the height over four titles. So uh just been a great run. And so uh, you know, hate hate one chapter in, but so fortunate to have a good landing spot. And also to have friends like Fabs who who bring me on and let me uh let me uh riddle ridicule his nonsense. Yeah. So make sure you check him out at fantasy um people. Football guys, I'm just breaking your stones. Come on. What uh, would would it be an episode of our program if I didn't do that? Come on. No. Uh we are going to get into week 18 for all of you crazy people out there who are still playing fantasy football in traditional leagues. I know a lot of folks out there wagering DFS, all that kind of fun stuff, which is what you should be doing. Uh, but navigating week 18 is very difficult uh, from a fantasy standpoint, especially when you're looking at rankings. We'll talk start them and sit them, and we will get you prepared for the final regular <laughs> season week of the National Football League. But first, with the NFL playoffs right around the corner, the NBA season in full swing. Bet online has you covered with the up to the second odds, news, and scores that you need with additional odds, lines, trends, and info on both desktop and mobile. You can get access to the world's best wagering info at any time. Head there today to get into the action and see all the updated odds. Remember to use your promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, uh, to receive 50% off on a welcome bonus on your first deposit. Uh, Bet online where the game starts. So let's go through some of the injuries first here, Bob. And some of the players that we know are not going to play. We'll start off with the quarterbacks as we do uh, every week. Matt Stafford, not going to play this week. It'll be Carson Wentz. Patrick Mahomes, not going to play this week. It'll be Blaine Gabbard. Lamar Jackson, not going to play this week. It'll be Tyler Huntley. And Brock Purdy, not going to play this week. It'll be Sam Darnold. These teams have nothing to play for this week. uh, So the quarterbacks will be rested. Right. And and also... The King, Joe Flacco, will be sitting. Jeff Driscoll will be starting for Cleveland. I yes. know everyone needs that. My Flacco yes. dose. Uh, Joe I Flacco, already miss him. Who is, who is now an elite fantasy quarterback, I guess. I don't know. Um, totally. Nick Mullins will get the start for the Lion, uh, against the Lions this week for Minnesota, which if you have Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison, you're pretty happy about that because Jaron Hall did not look like he belonged on an NFL field, uh, at least not as a starting quarterback. Uh, Tua's dealing with a shoulder. He'll be good to go against Buffalo. Will Levis uh, dealing with a foot. Uh, we could see Ryan Tannehill this week for the Titans in a meaningless game, at least for Tennessee. Uh, at running back, uh, more of the same. Christian McCaffrey's not going to play this week. Kyron Williams is not going to play this week. My guess is that Jerome Ford will not play this week. My guess is that Isaiah Pacheco will not play this week. All those teams that have nothing to play for are going to rest their players and and uh, be, be cautious because you don't want guys to get hurt in meaningless games. Uh, so keep that in mind. Also, the pivot from Christian McCaffrey might not be Elijah Mitchell now because he has some sort of illness 
and he was not able to practice on Wednesday. <clears throat> So if that is the case and he can't go, it's Jordan Mason. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, we, um, we started hearing this earlier in the week too. Matt Barrows from The Athletic started reporting it would more likely be a Jordan Mason than Elijah Mitchell. That was before the news of this illness came out. So yeah, that doubles down on it. Yeah, so um, Elijah Mitchell, if you went out and picked him up, you may want to grab Jordan Mason uh, this week. Alvin Kamara is dealing with an ankle. Uh, not sure if he's going to be able to go. Jamal Williams will be the pivot there. Uh, Raheem Mostert did not play last week, still dealing with knee and ankle injuries. Uh, Ken Walker still dealing with a shoulder. Uh, Josh Jacobs with the quad, uh, probably expecting Zamir White to go again for the Raiders, who uh, he's done very well uh, over the last few weeks. Jacobs says he's pushing to play, so we'll see about that one. I would love to be able to play Zamir White, but obviously it would be difficult. If, if Jacobs, if there's a notion that Jacobs will be active. Uh, wide receivers, uh, Cooper Cup's not going to play this week. We already know that. Once again, with the same teams, Browns, Ravens, Niners, like those kind of players uh, on those teams, probably not going to play. And if they do play, it'll be very limited. Uh, Puka Nakua, my guess is, will play uh, yeah, once he yards. gets the record for the uh, for the rookie receiving yards. He will probably sit. Uh, so I don't know if I'm playing Puka this week. That that's yeah. probably the only reason he's going to be out there. Uh, Jalen Waddle still dealing with an ankle. Devontae Smith also dealing with an ankle. Uh, T Higgins with a hamstring injury. Uh, Amari Cooper and, and Elijah Moore, my guess is they won't play this week because they don't have anything to play for. Uh, Chris Olave is dealing with an ankle. Uh, Corlin Sutton missed last week's game with the concussion. Jaden Reed came out of last week's game with the chest injury. Christian Watson's been back at practice. Maybe we get him back this week. Uh, Noah Brown also dealing uh, with an injury. He's got a, uh, a nicked up back. Uh, so keep tabs on him as we get into that Saturday game. Remember, there are two Saturday games this week. You've got Baltimore and Pittsburgh. You've got Colts and you've got Texans. Uh, two big games, maybe not for the Ravens, but the Steelers uh, need to win to keep their, their playoff hopes alive. Uh, at tight end, uh, Travis Kelsey is dealing with a neck injury, and my guess is that he will not play. Uh, again, same teams, Bob, right? Chiefs, Browns, uh, Niners, Ravens uh, do not expect their top players to be able to go this week. We already know Tyler Higby will not play this week against the Niners. Uh, Sam Laporta has an ankle injury. Not sure how severe it is. The Lions are saying they're going to play their starters, Bob. Uh, yeah. Do you have any uh, any trepidation about Laporta? Then? <clears throat> uh, maybe a little bit. You know, like uh, Dan Campbell. You know, you've got to be careful about, about some of the language. We're playing to win. It's not necessarily we're playing all our starters the whole game. They might have to make some adjustments. So I think they'll be willing to in this case. They are going to the postseason, so there's no sense putting someone in danger in this game where they really can't you know, improve their life greatly. Yeah. Um, because we love to give you some uh, plays in the DFS world, because a lot of you will be playing in DFS this week. Uh, we've got some good bargains and uh, some players to fade. And the thing too, Bob, is like this week, because of all the starters who are not going to play, you know, all the, the big name players who are <laughs> not going to play, there's going to be a lot of cheap guys who are going to be playing prominent roles this week. So, you can fill your lineup with some really good expensive players and afford multiple uh, high end expensive types because you can spend a lot less money on guys who are going to start. And let's start off with the quarterbacks, Bob. Tyrod Taylor is $5,300 against the Eagles. That is a great bargain. He had 18 points last week. The Eagles are awful against quarterbacks. And then Sam Darnold who's going to start sure. against the Rams defense that will not play Aaron Donald. I'm sure he's not the only starter who's going to not play on defense. Darnold's 5,200 bucks. Anybody else, Bob, that you like? Uh, the, well, I mean, I like some of the higher end plays as well. I mean, Dak Prescott for as long as he plays is going to, you know, if, the, if the Dallas is going to get up, he's going to be a big part of that. I'm happy to play him. I think there's a whole range of guys that are going, you know, like kind of guys who would be playing anyway. I would go, you know, in DFS, it's a little hard because it'll be the Saturday slate, but either CJ Stroud is a great play. Gardner Minshew is a cheap option. Jordan Love, I think, is a solid play as well this week. Uh, so playing Geno Smith, like they need to win $2 million on the line for him to get into the playoffs. That's a fair play yep. as well. Uh, the fades, and like, I'm not going to sit back and say fade Patrick Mahomes and fade Joe Flacco because I know they ain't playing. So there's not a lot of fades um, across the league. At quarterback, though, I don't love Baker Mayfield at $6,200. The Panthers are good against quarterbacks. I know the Bucks have a lot to play for. Uh, but I don't love that number because, well, first off, you know, Baker Mayfield coming off of a, a decent game, but uh, I think a little bit less than we thought he would produce based on the matchup. 
And Carolina at home against quarterbacks has been very tough. Yeah. And then Jake Browning against the Browns. Now I, the Browns are probably going to sit defensive players too. Uh, fifty seven hundred dollars. The matchup on mm. paper is not great, but, mm. but they haven't been as good on the road though. The Browns have been like a lesser right. unit on the road. It's been noticeable, and I, I do think Browning Browning might be without T Higgins though that we'll talk about. And He's a little nicked up. Why would Jamar Chase even play in this game, Bob? I don't, I don't know. know. No, so that, one one reason I don't think the I don't think the Bengals have gone defeated in division. Right? They don't want to go winless in their division. I think that's one possibility. Um, also, they'd like a winning record, but I mean. You know, obviously they're not playing for postseason glory here, so so there is a right. uh, level of their interest here that's probably going to you know discretion will be the better part of valor with injured players, and that's part of the reason why I don't like Browning this week because uh, he could be without one or both of his top wide receivers. Uh, let's move on to the running backs, Bob. Some of the bargains: uh, Ezekiel Elliott against the Jets is fifty nine hundred dollars. Assuming you know he's going to get a full workload, I don't know. That's what makes Week eighteen tough. And then Bob had said Jordan Mason, uh, Elijah Mitchell's fifty eight hundred dollars. Jordan Mason's forty six. If Jordan Mason's going to get the call, then Jordan Mason is certainly uh, an even better bargain than Elijah Mitchell this week. And you know, go through the teams. You know, Ronnie Rivers is going <clears> to <throat> be cheap. Um, yeah, the, Zach Charbonnet is relatively cheap going against Arizona, five thousand yep. dollars. So Pierre Strong could be cheap because who knows? You know what the Browns are going to do at running back. So keep those guys in mind. Uh, the fades, Derrick Henry against the Jags, 6400 bucks. I think they're going to get a little Tajay Spears going this week. Uh, and th this could end up being Derrick Henry's last game with the Titans, Bob. We don't right. know. He owns – well, he doesn't, he doesn't own the Jaguars like he owns the uh, – like, Well, he like did own, own the, the Texans. Texans. Now the Texans own him. Right. But but he is from Jacksonville and tends to <laughs> tends to play up uh, to a little higher level against the Jaguars. Uh, Ty Chandler against the Lions at $5,600. Uh, also a little bit too rich like, for my blood. Uh, like what anybody about Rashad got, White is like he's a little expensive, but Rashad White against Carolina on a Buccaneers yes. team that has something to play for, I think he's got to be in most lineups. Jonathan yeah. Taylor as well against Houston. Yep. Jonathan James Connor against ranked, Seattle. Yep. Jonathan Taylor is my number one ranked running back for the week. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I have White, but I think Taylor right after him. So I mean, one six one half dozen the other to me. Yep. Uh, moving on to the wide receivers, the bargains. Brandon Cooks against the Commanders, fifty two hundred mm. bucks. Giddy up. Uh, commanders are awful against wide receivers. The Cowboys should score a lot of points this week in a very meaningful game for my beloveds. Mm. And then Darius Slayton at $4,000 against the Eagles, who are terrible against wide receivers. Uh, the Eagles have something to play for. The Giants have, uh, well, the spoiler role uh, mm. in their um, in their sights. So Darius Slayton, Wendell Robinson, also uh, a player that maybe you want to take a look at. Anybody else that you like, Bob? Uh, maybe Demarcus Robinson a little bit. Somebody's got to catch the yeah. ball. I don't know if Carson Wentz can throw it okay, but at forty five hundred dollars against the San Francisco defense that has been vulnerable enough through the air anyway, and you wonder how if they won't be a little more so uh, this week. Yep. Um, the fades. I'm fading Puka at seventy eight hundred dollars. That's way ex way expensive for a player that I don't think is going to play maybe more than a quarter because. Right. I think I'm just going to look to get him that record and get him out of the yeah, game. Yeah, it's 29 yards. Sean McVay has basically said as much in his uh, slightly uncoded, veiled, less than veiled language. Like he's he's on the line for a special season. We'd like to see him have that, and that's probably all they'd like to see. Yes. Uh, so uh, expect many many targets to go to Puka's uh, in direction. Right. <laughs> Short then, passes early on, and then that's it. And then that's it. I don't love Tyler Lockett against the Cardinals no. at 5,600 rounds. The Cardinals have actually been good against receivers lately. In the last month or so, look at the numbers. Receivers mm -hmm. have not put up big numbers against them. What did A.J. Brown do last week? Buckus. What did Devontae Smith do last week? Buckus. Uh, Cardinals are <laughs> Cardinals are playing better. I, I, I want to just quickly say, I, you know, I want to I want an apology to you, Jonathan Gannon. Uh, early this season, I thought, you know, that video that they put out where he was in there giving his motivational speech and and the players were just sitting there going, really? it's kind of it weak. Like, us, yeah, it looked like, it looked like you know, it reminded me of Mike Thomas. We want you know. We want volunteers, not hostages. It looked like a team of hostages. Clearly, Jonathan Gannon has has done something with this team, and he has them playing hard every week. And uh, and I'm interested to see where he takes this going forward. Now that they've made the commitment to Kyle Murray, uh, Kyler Murray, uh, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how this offseason plays out. They got some a lot of draft capital. I'm kind of excited yeah. about it. Cardinals, Bears. I mean, they're looking good um, in terms of the draft capital and what they could do next year. Uh, DFS bargains at tight end. Uh, Tucker Craft is thirty seven hundred dollars against the Bears. Now that's Assuming no Luke Musgrave, uh, Musgrave has been returning to practice on a limited basis, but uh, not sure if he's going to go. And then Juwan Johnson, who helped me win a fantasy championship last week, 
had a huge game, $3,600. He's cheaper than Taysom Hill. Uh, I, I like that against Atlanta. Uh, speaking of fades in Taysom Hill, $4,600. I'm not going to go there. Uh, Kyle Pitts, I will never go there again. $4,000, Bob. Any uh, any thoughts on uh, bargains or fades at tight end in DFS? Oh, I think you nailed Kyle Pitts. How about this? $3,000, uh, Johnny Munt from Minnesota against Detroit. Uh, it's Detroit likely to, you know, like I, I think Detroit might lighten up as the game goes on, right? I mean, they may start out hot, but, uh, you know, it's looking pretty likely their playoff spot is locked in. So they've been vulnerable uh, over the middle uh, this season. So I'd be leaning on him as a super cheap option. The thing is, Fabs, this week, there are so many violent. Usually we're looking for those minimum price tight ends that have an opportunity, right? Like that's how you, yeah. you know, finish building a, like a really strong lineup of the other positions. Um, this week, it's going to be a lot easier to build, you know, affordable lineups with all the various right. players in play. So you might not need that, but if you need a mid price tight end, uh, Johnny Munt should not be overlooked. Yeah. This is where we're at folks. Week 18 people. This is where <laughs> we're at right now. So uh, look for news on starters, not going and the backups who are going to be very cheap and playing prominent roles could help you uh, set a pretty good lineup up. Let, let's get into starts and sits. And of course, these all fall into DFS as well. For those of you who are crazy town and are playing in week 18. And before we get into that though, Bob, have you ever played in a points only league where it runs right through the regular season? Uh, no, not like a total points only league, but I do, you know, I know people who do. And I, you know, I know people also who play like in the median league where you have a median game, a second game that's based on median scoring. Right. Uh, and some of those go through week 18. So you know, it's it's interesting. I I want to avoid week eighteen like the plague, other than my DFS yeah. tournament lineups. I I've never played. I've only played in a week eighteen once, and that was last year because of the Demar Hamlin thing. Um, yeah. So I wouldn't mind doing it though. Like you know, just points. You know, it, I mean, it's not like roto football, like you know, where you know, there's categories. Just like you know, see who scores the most points. I think that could be fun. I love the head to head aspect of it, but maybe play in one league where it's just points, you know, and have a little fun with that. Uh, I think that could be, that could be interesting. Uh, I'm always up for a new challenge. So uh, let, let's go into the quarterback starts. And in, in these players, you're looking for players who are on teams that have something to play for. Dak Prescott and the Cowboys have something to play for. If they win NFC right. East, number two seed throughout uh, the playoffs. Uh, Washington, 18 plus points to quarterbacks 11 times, including four who've gone over 25. So this is a great matchup for Dak. Um it would be way more fun, though. I hate to say this. If it wasn't the Commanders. Because <laughs> they might get up, you know, and, and pull everybody, right? So, um, we'll see. But I know the Cowboys. You know the Cowboys. I know the Cowboys are um, a team that can lose to bad teams on the road. <clears throat> Cardinals. Uh, so, I, I'm a little worried. But um, I guess that would be the one thing that if the Cowboys are boat racing the commanders that Dak might not play a lot in the second half. But uh, if they're boat racing them, they boat race them how? Right? I mean, like, so I get it's it. not like I get it. Yeah, I get know, it. So I'm not like totally out on guys that where I think that, that there might be a blowout. I'm not going to be fearful of players that I think are going to score a ton of points because if they score a ton of points or enough points to get ahead, Dak probably had a hand nothing. in it. Not for nothing. The commanders get nothing by winning this game. In fact, they hurt themselves by winning this game because right now they have the number two overall pick. So they're going to get one of the top two quarterbacks in the 2024 class. If they win the game, it messes that up. And so I'm sure that uh, commander's management is aware of this. <laughs> and maybe it's right. note to Ron Rivera. Hey, Riverboat, don't get cute. Uh, CJ Stroud on Saturday, very good play against the Colts. The last time he played Indianapolis, he had over 21 fantasy points. Jared Goff, the, the Lions say they're starting their players uh, as if this were a, a normal game. The Lions still could move up uh, in terms of the seeding in the NFC. It's unlikely, but they still could move right. up. Uh, and the Vikings gave up a really big stat line to Jordan Love last week. So Goff, plus he's at home, uh, is a good play. Tyrod Taylor against the Eagles. Great play to me. Yeah. Great play. 18 points last week, almost 19. Most points 22 allowed. on DraftKings. Huh? 22 on DraftKings. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, the ideal play to me. Uh, most points allowed to quarterbacks this year. Well, that honor goes to the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, so keep that in mind. I don't know if Trevor Lawrence is going to play this week, but if he does, 
Uh, he's a good play against the Titans based on the numbers. Geno Smith, Jordan Love, also in the mix. Quarterbacks to sit. It's not exactly a great list, folks, because a lot of the guys that I might tell you to sit are not playing. Uh, but Tua Tungvaloa has scored fewer than 16 points in five of his last six games. In two of those games, it was single digits. The Bills have allowed the second fewest points to quarterbacks in the last four weeks. Uh, we may not have Raheem Mostert again. We may not have Jalen Waddell again. Uh, Tua also dinged up his shoulder last week. Uh, what's your confidence level in him this week, Bob? Uh, it's not great, right? I mean, I do think he's, I think, you know, obviously they're essentially in a de facto, you know, AFC's title game here. So they do have something on the line, but, but everything you said is true. It hasn't been great. It was, it was a nice early season run for him, uh, but the fade happened and you've probably got better options. Uh, Jake Browning, uh, not a great matchup. Again, we know that the Browns are going to sit starters, but the Bengals might not have T. Higgins and or Jamar Chase this week. So keep that in mind. Baker Mayfield's playing for something, but Carolina has allowed the fifth fewest fantasy points to quarterbacks in the last four weeks. And Baker only scored 9.9 points against them at home in week 13. Uh, Derek Carr also, who's not been bad lately, 20 plus points in two of his last three games. But the last time he played the Falcons, 10.9 points. Uh, so Derek Carr is a bit of a risk for me. Sam Howell also falls into that category, Bob. Uh, moving on to the running backs. And the running back position, once again, is watered down a little bit because a lot of guys are not going to play. Uh, assuming James Conner is a full go against Seattle, the guy has been awesome yep. in the last three games against the Pittsburgh, title last week. the Niners, and the Eagles. Really tough run defenses. He's been great. Uh, Seattle – five touchdowns, and the fifth most points allowed to running backs in the last four weeks. I've got Tony Pollard as a stardom. I, I liked him last. <laughs> I, I liked him as a sit him last week, and he sucked. Uh, he's had three <laughs> bad games in a row. But over the last four weeks, the commanders are giving him 151 yards per game on the ground and the most points to running backs, Bob. Thoughts so, on Tony Pollard? So I, we, we agree 100%. I think it's easy to overlook when you talk about the commanders because their pass defense is so generous. Uh, just how generous they are to running backs. And you are co exactly correct. They have been laying down on the regular. So this week he is also on my list. Uh, very high. Uh, Elijah Mitchell. Uh, if he's the starter, he is the play uh, against the Rams. Now, maybe it's going to be Jordan Mason. As we get deeper into the week, you'll find out either one of the Niners starting running backs, whoever it's going to be, is going to be a very nice RB2 play against yep. the Rams who will also not be playing starters. Devin Singletary is a really good play on Saturday against the Colts. Uh, they they have given up 176.8 total yards per game and the fourth most points to running backs in the last four weeks. So Singletary is a very nice play this week. Uh, Ken Walker, assuming he's a go. Uh, Zeke right. and James Cook also uh, are nice plays from a fantasy standpoint, Bob. Uh, running backs to fade this week. Javante Williams. He's been a disappointment. It's it's Jaleel McLaughlin week there in Denver, it seems I, like, I, right? We saw him get like the momentum that's, that's, last week, and it seems like they're kind of in audition mode. So I think that's the direction he's going. Very disappointed last week in Javante Williams. Yeah. Thought it was a great matchup, and his prime opportunity turned out it was a prime opportunity for Jaleel McLaughlin this week will be as well. So Javante is going to be on the bench. I don't love Chuba Harvard this week. His, his touches and his points have gone down in four straight weeks, and the Buccaneers have given up the third fewest points to running backs in the last four weeks. Uh, Tampa Bay is also playing for the NFC South title. So uh, keep that in mind. I don't love Hubbard in this game. Uh, Ty Chandler, I don't love him against Detroit. The last time he played the Lions, he had 17 yards. Uh, he had a touchdown. He still didn't score double digits. Uh, Detroit plans to play their starters as well. So uh, Chandler's a risk. And then Gus Edwards I have on this list. And part of it is because I don't think he's going to play. It's Melvin Gordon week. <laughs> right. I think it's going to Melvin Gordon week. So if you're starting a Ravens running back, it's probably going to be Melvin Gordon. Uh, don't love Derrick Henry this week, but you're probably going to end up having a playing if you are playing in a week 18 matchup, uh, which again, Bob and I do not recommend doing for the most part. Wide receivers. Let's start off on a Saturday. Texans, Colts, both of the number one wide receivers in this game are very solid options. Nico Collins and Michael Pittman. Pittman did not have a good game last week, but still, uh, I am going to face, uh, I am going to play him in a Face-off that has big-time playoff implications. Uh, Collins also beat the Colts for 27.6 points earlier this season. He's a very yep. good option. Seems uh, like Pittman, Noah Brown a little nicked up, too. If there is no Noah yep. Brown, that adds to it. Robert Woods a little nicked up, too, I think. Uh, and, and I know Garrett Gardner-Mitchell will be looking for Michael Pittman often. 
Uh, Houston defense has allowed the seventh most points to perimeter receivers over the last four weeks. I like Garrett Wilson this week against the Patriots, uh, assuming the Patriots and the Jets are going to be playing uh, their starters. I don't know for sure because the game has no meaning whatsoever, but their defense, New England's, has allowed 11th most points to perimeter receivers this year. Uh, so Wilson's a wide receiver to flex. And I, I like Calvin Ridley too, assuming that we get Trevor Lawrence back. The Titans right. defense has allowed the fourth most points to the perimeter and Ridley beat him for 31 points back in week 11, Bob. Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a soft play. Ridley has been so close to so many big games. He's, he's delivered on a couple of them, right? I mean, but he's been so close to, they definitely look his way in scoring position and, and as the, and we may have Zay Jones back this week. I think he's limited as well. If they're, it's going to be all on hands on deck if they can to go. Sadly, the great Jamal Agnew will not be on the field. Uh, on that the great I, Jamal Agnew. Okay. Every time he gets opportunities, he tends to excel yeah. a little bit. But uh, obviously, not a front line receiving asset. But when they thrust him into action, he's been pretty effective. Uh, wide receivers that I would be uh, sitting this week if I could: Terry McLaurin. Uh, single digits in four of his last five games against my beloved Dallas Cowboys, including a week 12 game earlier this year where he had 50 yards. Uh, and, uh, you know, maybe he gets some garbage time if the Cowboys are boat racing the commanders, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, the matchup's not great. Drake London, we've hated Drake for the last few weeks. We've been right to hate the Drake. Uh, he hasn't been bad career-wise against the Saints. He has scored double digits in every game, but low double digits. And New Orleans has given up four touchdowns and the fourth fewest points to perimeter receivers uh, this is not a great matchup for Drake London. Tyler Lockett has been very inconsistent and historically he's done really well against the Cardinals, but the Cardinals have all the six fewest points to wide receivers in the last four weeks. And earlier in the season, he was held to single digit points against Arizona. So I don't love Tyler Lockett this week, even though Seattle is playing for something they're playing for the playoffs. And then Gabe Davis, he is, he is the fantasy football version of Russian roulette. He really is. <laughs> right. He, which here, here's the crazy numbers. He has been held the single digits in six of his last eight games. And four of those games, he scored nothing. Okay. Now he did have a good game in his last game. Uh, and he did beat the dolphins for 15 points back in week four. Still way too much risk for me to play Gabe Davis. If I'm in a fantasy championship, Bob. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Uh, and there's a guy I like Greg Dorsch on the other side of that one, by the way. Uh, Deontay Johnson, uh, also a fade for me. George Pickens is all of a sudden just lighting it up uh, with Mason Rudolph under center. Uh, Demario Douglas also going to be a fade for me this week. I know, folks, the numbers are uh, not great, and the names are quite ugly. Drake London is someone people are going to want to play who's not going to be, you know, I mean, like, you know, you're looking for starters who are sure to play, but uh, he's on the road and oh, same secondary coming off a strong showing, so I'd be worried about yep. that one. Uh, moving on to the tight end position, uh, the stardoms, Dallas Goddard, this may seem like low hanging fruit because he's had two good games in a row. Um, but in his previous four games, he was held to single digits in every single game and Devonte Smith is banged up. And maybe that's going to mean more targets for Goddard in this game where the Eagles, you know, would obviously like to win, uh, to have a shot at at least beating the Cowboys for the NFC East. But, uh, Dallas would have to lose to the commanders for that to happen. Uh, Tucker Kraft is going up against the bears this week. He has scored at least 10 points. Uh, in each of his last four games. That's pretty good at tight end. You'll take yep. that, especially from a backup. The Bears have allowed six touchdowns and the sixth most points to tight ends this year. Uh, I talked about Jawan Johnson as a DFS option. He is also a nice option in traditional leagues. 23 points last week. Uh, he's certainly a worthwhile add if he's on the waiver wire. Atlanta's defense has allowed close to 13 points per game to opposing tight ends. Bob, what say you on the tight end position? Uh, I would agree with some of that. Again, I think it's not – you know, Gerald Everett should not be looking overlooked uh, on a team that's running out of targets. Uh, so, mm -hmm. you know, Everett, Alex Erickson in your DFS tournaments, uh, I'm kind of with you there. Darren Waller, I know, I know, I said it. Uh, he's he's looking he's back. He looks pretty good. And I think having Tyrod Taylor at quarterback makes me feel a little more comfortable about him. Uh, Dalton Schultz uh, is among my sit -em tight ends. We told you not to play him last week. He had 3.9 points. Uh, he played the Colts earlier in the season, 7.4 points. The Colts have been very tough against tight ends. In fact, they've allowed one to beat them for more than 11.4 points. And uh, ironically enough, that was Kyle Pitts, uh, yeah. who's typically not that great. Uh, speaking of Kyle Pitts, put him on your bench. The last time he played the Saints, 4.2 points. Uh, he had 1.5 points last week. Uh, bottom line, I don't think it's a Kyle Pitts problem. It's a Arthur Smith problem. Uh, but that is what we get uh, with Kyle Pitts. Keep him on your bench. 
I don't love Pat Fryermuth either. Again, I know no. the Ravens are probably going to rest some starters. He's had hmm. two good games all year. That's it. You know, single digits in five straight games in seven of his last eight. But, so, but if you're but if you're in a horrible pitch, an offense that's put up 30 points over the last two games, any port in a storm kind of situation, I think that's what he is. I'm with you. I'm not like eager to play him. I'm not pushing it. Exactly what you said is true. Two good games, uh, but in an offense that's kind of rolling up. And you you know you were mentioning you were a fade on Deontay Johnson, but against the Ravens defense, it's going to be resting. You know, I think like in desperation times, or at least you know times where you're digging a little deeper than you might otherwise. Yeah, I think Johnson's okay play there too. Um. Uh, real quick here, we're going to go through some streaming defenses for you uh, because, you know, Bob and I are just that kind. Buccaneers this week, good streaming option. Saints, good streaming option. Eagles, also a good streaming option. Jaguars, Steelers, uh, good streaming options. Jets, Patriots, uh, good streaming options. Well. Raiders. And, the Lo- and yes, the Raiders and the Lions too. Uh, Nick Mullins like to throw the ball to the wrong team. So if you're hmm. looking for potential... Streaming options or cheap options in DFS. Those are some of the play. Bob, uh, before we wrap things up here, uh, any advice for the folks out there playing in a Week 18 Fantasy Football Championship? Don't play in Week 18 Fantasy <laughs> Football Championships. <laughs> Look, the NFL defense. is designed from soup to nuts. I mean, the ball is an oblong spheroid. It bounces funny ways on purpose. The NFL has built this league so that unexpected outcomes are have become the norm. Uh, why add a layer of difficulty to your fantasy season that's unnecessary? This isn't diving, people. You don't get extra points for degree of difficulty. This is like, you know, work it out. I, I, I think this is like, you know, like I get it. If you want to keep playing, jump into the DFS pool. There are postseason tournaments out there that you can jump into, kind of one and done tournaments that are a ton of fun. Uh, so, so expend your energy in that direction. But if you're in one, play to win, play smart, don't outsmart yourself, go with sure players who you know are going to be on the field or at least have a good opportunity in case of, say, the Dallas Cowboys, if they're going to get up, like we said, the players who start are probably going to get you up. So uh, so keep it simple. Don't don't get too crazy on your on your outlier picks. And then also, much like we said last week, don't roster players that you're not going to use. Right. No right? I mean, as Season's crazy over. as it sounds, Patrick Mahomes is not playing this week. You cut, cut him. him. I, right? I mean, if Travis Kelsey is not going to play this week, you cut hmm. him. And then you yep. pick up a player or a defense or a kicker to block your opponent. Um, Jordan Mason, one of those players who maybe is going to rise up the radar. Maybe everyone's not Ronnie aware Rivers, of what's going on. With honestly, yeah, yep. that, 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 that's what you want to do. You, there's no reason to have Matt Stafford or Cooper Cup right now because they're not playing, which is kind of part of the ridiculousness of playing in a week 18. Uh, but that's all for us here on the Believe Fantasy Football Show. Of course, we are presented by Bet Online uh, for our, our loyal producer who does. Uh, terrific work and is also a Dallas Cowboys fan and also the champion of the believe invitational uh, Alex toss our guy. Um, We are going to be going to a one podcast per week schedule starting next week. Uh, Bob Harris and I will have everything covered throughout the off season uh, and the pre the postseason postseason rankings, postseason starts and sits off season, talk free agency trades, all that madness. Cause the off season is a lot of fun uh, in the national football league these days uh so for the great legendary king from football guys i believe that's correct.com that's right you know i love you uh i am fabs good luck in week 18 and more importantly let's go cowboys come on baby let's wrap up that nfc east have a good one folks <laughs>